One, two, three, four. Season two, episode one. Huh? Mike and John got it going on. Do we though? I am. Well, I have headphones on for the first time. I know. For the this is the big debut of the next season. Yeah, I'm wearing headphones. This is our new. Yeah, we got a new toy. We got here. a new setup. Yeah, and this uh, is we're still trying to work it all out. But uh, yes, it's Mike and John got it going on. Brought to you by Firehouse Doors, and um, we have to start season two off. Yeah, with a bang. Of course, the premiere of what those that come to our big splash party are going to receive the first 100 people through yeah. the door. We'll get one of these. Right. I right. can't really see it now because I'm blocking well, us. Well, no, but I, see, it's there. No, you're good. It's now, there. Now flip it around. Flip it around. Right, there you go. And you got Just our sponsors the on the back there. there. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers and Firehouse Doors. And your tramp stamp of Mike and John got it going on. It's right above your fanny. Right in the perfect yes. tramp, span, uh, tramp stamp spot. <laughs> that way it won't get all shriveled up as we get older. Yeah. So, yeah, those are, that's coming up this weekend. Yeah, that's Saturday. Saturday. You're talking about the tram stamp shriveling up, right? No, I'm talking yeah. about the uh, the splash party. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> so the first 100 people at the Howell Theater, doors open at 6, splash on the screen around 7. Right. And, of course, we're doing uh, giveaways with Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. Everybody's going to qualify for that. We'll give you a raffle ticket, and we'll do the drawing after the movie. Right. So we have this uh, also a new toy here that that John bought. Well, we for, bought. Well, I had no it's say for, in a minute. It's just, you went, it's you're just like, oh, let's someone's got it. Yeah. So we've got new stuff. Yeah, yeah. new stuff. So this yeah. is a, a neat little unit that yeah. uh, our microphones and thus the, the yeah. headphones have right. come in. See, so we have new microphones, new recording unit. Now i got to redo my yeah. hair after the show. Now, for the podcast only. Now, you know, we've had exclusive post-show content for the YouTube and Facebook viewers. Right. Now we have exclusive uh, uh, add-ons for our podcast listeners only. So the oh. people watching this on YouTube and Facebook aren't going to hear, for instance, the this. Oh, our fans. Yeah, the, the applause. Like, we have a little button here. Oh, so we have sound plays effects. Applause. So like, like we're right. with D's in 1980. Right. <laughs> right. Or when we tell a wacky joke. Oh, yeah. The rim shot. Now, of course, the viewers on Facebook aren't here, but the podcast, they, they get that exclusive. Let's not do that. Audio <laughs> content. <laughs> because Why, we have a, whole, a little honky yeah, horn. We could. We can add it. No. If you want, we can add that. No. Yeah, no, we can do that. I'm not a sound effects yeah. kind of guy. We, we can do it. I like natural sound. Yeah. Okay. But if you must, with the new thing we have here, right. the uh, the PodTrack P4. Right. That's what it's called. Yeah. That's pretty fancy. You can tell we've 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 jumped into season two with with new technology. Yeah, that's just fancy. Which stuff. we're still trying to figure out. So, <laughs> but we have a band now. This yeah, we do for the podcast only. Yeah. Oh yeah, some okay. bass going on there. Oh, fire the band. I, I like Cooper better. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. So um, oh, Paul's in the band. Yeah, well, right? yeah. You know, <laughs> Schaefer, Paul, Paul Schaefer, yeah, Paul Schaefer, or or McCartney. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so yeah, we're not going to do that. All right, coming up, we'll get to the uh, the correct answer for uh, last night's Wednesday night trivia. Studies found about fifteen percent of married women say they regularly do this for their spouse. We wanted to know what it is. We'll go through some of your answers and give you the correct answer, which I don't think anybody got. We'll uh, we'll get to that in just a little bit. Rich Pearlberg and uh, the less you know coming up. But before that, local news brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. All right, here's what's going on. Michigan State Police say a 10-year-old died Wednesday at a recreational area near Milford. Troopers assigned to Camp Dearborn, a 626-acre recreational retreat owned by the city of Dearborn, responded around 6 p.m. after witnesses reported a boy was on a floating play structure in the middle of the main lake and fell. The child, who was unresponsive, was taken to a nearby hospital with CPR in progress. But life-saving efforts were ultimately unsuccessful, according to an MSP statement. While an autopsy is scheduled for Thursday, state police say 
It appears it was a tragic accident. A member of the Livingston County Board of Commissioners has asked Michigan State Police to investigate a claim that her challenger in the August Republican primary has violated state election laws. Second District Commissioner Carol Sue Reeder claims former County Commissioner David Domas illegally stated on campaign materials he was running for re-election. Gomez previously served on the board from 2005 to 2018 when he withdrew from the primary. State police confirmed they were investigating a complaint by Reader, but did not identify the target. Results, though, will be forwarded to the Livingston County Prosecutor's Office for possible charges. The leader of the base, a national white supremacist group that advocates for violence against the government, was sentenced Wednesday on charges of terrorizing a Dexter family in a case of mistaken identity. Justin Watkins of Bad Axe was sentenced to serve 56 months to six years in prison for his guilty plea to one felony count of gang membership. It was part of a plea deal with prosecutors in which his sentence could not exceed the one that he received in Tuscola County earlier this year for conspiring to train for a civil disorder. The cases resulted from a joint investigation by state police and the FBI. Charges were initially filed in October of 2020 against Watkins and Alfred Gorman in connection to a December 2019 incident, which authorities say a Dexter family was terrorized at their home after the men used intimidation tactics and posted messages to other members of the base targeting the home. Authorities say Watkins had mistaken the family's home for that of an anti-white supremacist podcaster. And a team of assessors from Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police will be in Howell later this month to examine all aspects of the Livingston County Sheriff's Office policies and procedures, management, operations, and support services. Sheriff Mike Murphy said the visit will take place Monday, July 25th. As part of the final on-site assessment, employees and members of the general public are invited to provide comments to the assessment team. They can do so by telephone or email. You'll find those details at Mike and John Podcast. And that's what's going on. And news brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. Brighton's preeminent jewelry store with a commitment to customer service, community involvement, honesty, professionalism, and exquisite merchandise. And of course, Mark and Barb Binkley pride themselves on being a big part of the community. And they are uh, the proud sponsors of the Taste of Brighton, which is coming up uh, next weekend. What are you doing? I'm playing around with the right. microphone. Now your microphone's off. Yeah. Oh, right. there you go. There I am. Then, you know, I kind of like that. See, I used to be able to control yeah. this stuff yeah. when we were on the radio. I could right. turn your microphone off. Now I can do the here. You know, maybe I'm going to move glad... this back over to my side. <laughs> Aren't you glad trying to make this it? more equitable. I see. But okay. <laughs> More controllable. We're still trying to figure things out. So, and, uh, right. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers, too, a part of our big giveaway coming up on uh, Saturday night at the Historic Howell Theater. <laughs> This microphone's pretty good. You're at the edge test. Right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you were such figure, a kid. We sometime. gotta figure this out. Yeah. All right. All right. So where are we at now? Oh yeah, we're at. I, uh, we have to go back to our, our trivia question, and right. then we're going to talk to Rich Pearlberg in uh, in just a little bit. Unless you know, what's today's topic? Uh, we are talking about uh, county commission race in District Five, as a matter of fact. Uh, the uh, three and four screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, yeah. So uh, a very uh, you know hotly contested uh, Republican primary for District Five. You got former Hall Mayor Nick Proctor uh, and the current Jay Commissioner Drake, right? Jay Drick, and they are uh, in quite the war of words. So we'll uh, yeah, maybe we'll they should run Russell for the uh, yeah the position, right? So, <laughs> you agree with no, I don't. No, 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 Mud wrestling, so yeah. 80s. All right, our trivia question from last night. Studies found 15% of married women say they regularly do this for their spouse. Want to know what it is? What's the first thing that came to mind? A lot of people said make their doctor's appointments or dentist appointments, those kind of things, medical kind of things. Yeah, making sure because I mean, it's my, the last my, thing we it, want to do. I don't know if they have, my, my wife doesn't actually make the appointments, but she definitely stays on top of me. Like, make sure, make the appointment. Or you made your appointment. Yeah, yeah. Mm, going. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, boy, because I want to live longer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, some of the answers. Uh, give him a back rub. Cut his hair. Mm. Shave their back. Wash their back in the shower. <laughs> wash their back in the shower <laughs> lay their clothes out for them the next day what are we six does it have your little name and the label on it or <laughs> we've got your underoos ready to go uh make their lunch every day call off work for them right yeah he's not gonna make it in today mm. uh yeah a couple people said the thing about the clothes 
uh, trim their nose hair or their ear hairs. Yeah, Mona and uh, Ann. What do you think? You got That's any the uh, bears in the cave there? Or? <laughs> I'm not looking up your <laughs> nose. Pack their suitcase for a trip. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like we're a bunch of six year olds. Nobody can <laughs> clip their toenails, yeah. lift the toilet seat. Oh, it's time for you to go, honey. <laughs> and pop their zits. None of these are correct, by the way. None of these are correct. Thank God. Uh fifteen percent of married women said on a regular basis they will pick up the check at a restaurant for them. Oh. So my wife and I do that, but it's like but it all it's comes the same from money. the same spot. I mean, yeah. so. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, I left my wallet right. at home. You know, the same tricky pole. <laughs> but again, <laughs> how many couples have separate finances? Maybe, I, maybe more than we yeah. know. Maybe more than we know. If we had, if if we had separate finances, I would be broke all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to control it. You'd yeah. buy new toys for the podcast, like the the one with your little rim shots and sound effects, and and clap. <laughs> the audience loves it. Yeah, it's kind of like, hey, John didn't pee on the toilet seat. Give him a round of applause. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Right. Thank you. All right, we're done with that. <laughs> okay. Eliminate those stupid <laughs> buttons. This is so stupid. Our uh, OG sponsor, of yeah. course, we want to thank Firehouse Doors, who's also a part of our big uh, movie night, our splash. Celebration for the summer. That's right. One of the uh, sponsors for that. They're family owned. Uh, they strive to treat each customer like family. They're veteran owned. Mike Witt, a proud U.S. Air Force veteran. They're your one stop shop for residential, commercial, and rolling steel overhead door needs. And for the past 21 years, they've been Livingston County's only authorized distributor for CHI overhead doors. Call them today, 810 599 7480 Firehouse Doors. All right, it's time for the less you know. Hey, wait a minute. Are we giving away TPC cards at the Summer Splash Party? Yeah, the first time the people in the door get a free t-shirt. shirt and, and a TPC, TPC card. card. Yeah, and, and maybe even one of our little stickers. Yeah. Mike and John podcast stickers. These are limited edition, by the way. <laughs> there you go. All right. The less you know is brought to you by our friends at Jordan Genso. You know, Mike, what are we not going to ask Jordan about today? Well, Mike, would you be interested in learning about the dramatic differences between seasons one and two of American Idol? Uh, other you than Ryan Seacrest. Like, because we're on season two right now. This, yeah, is, we are. this okay. is the first yeah. episode of, of no, season two No, I don't really care us. about American Idol. Well, a conversation with Jordan Genso will leave you knowing less. <laughs> of American Idol. Seasons one and two. Like, this dialogue is so natural. Anyway, <laughs> if you wanted to know about how the current housing market is changing in response to increased interest rates and inventory, a conversation with Jordan Genso at Remax Platinum will leave you knowing more, not less. Exactly. So give Jordan a call, 248-444-9777. That's 9777. Yeah. Don't say 9777. No. Nope. That's not how you do it. Nope. It's 9777. But before that, 444. Four, four. Well, yeah, don't just dial 9777. Yeah, I mean, you probably get some probably kind of strange one. Happen. Might, I don't know. You're but... about American Idol 1 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, 248-444-9777. Or you can find them on Facebook at Jordan Genso Community Servant Community Real. Talk to somebody who really knows real estate. And then, of course, Jordan Genso. And none of these others that uh, right. claim to know more about real estate. Right. Rich Pearlberg and the less you know. What were we talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, the I contested race. That's I don't right. know. That's right. All right. Wait a Let's see. You got you got everything set up, so we're... There it is. So you okay. can hear the ring, and it's not a sound effect. All we're right. just podcast-only listeners. I think we had the microphones up too loud, so they're picking up the interference. Well, you're in control of that. What if Rich isn't a This is a learning. Hi, this is Rich. <laughs> Hi, Rich. You're calling. Hey, Rich. Uh, For the last word. <laughs> what, do, what do you want to say to Rich? Hi. <laughs> Maybe Rich forgot. Remember we were going to call? <laughs> Thing we do every week. Hi. Remember that email yesterday <laughs> where we were discussing that we were going to call today? And, and now it's today. And, and we're and calling. Your, your voicemail. And now we have to fill yeah. But we weren't prepared for that. You today. know, I, I feel like we do know less. You know, I feel like maybe this should be the new segment. We know less than we, less. We bring we up know. a topic. 
We call Rich. We get his voicemail. All right. <laughs> and then we just leave him a message. <laughs> just leave a message. Well, hopefully, Rich, you get this message soon and uh, give us a call back. That'd be nice. All right. You know that. Yeah. Um, so the less you know, do you know somebody named Les in real life? I do. What Les do you know? Uh, Les Rodwell. He's yeah. the former uh, fire marshal for the city of Howell. Yeah, and I believe he's a follower of the podcast. So, and uh, and I know Lester Palmatier III. Who's that? He was one of my roommates. Oh, okay. He lived in Eagle. Well, for me, I know Lester Holt. He does the news. On well, NBC. no, it's somebody that you know. Yeah. You oh, know I him see. just from oh. TV. It's not somebody that you know, know. You know, we had a former correspondent uh, named Les Rockwell. Yes. He got into yeah. a lot of trouble down yeah. Les Rockwell. But that was many, many years ago. Yes. Well, you know what we'll do? Since we've learned less from Rich. Boy, sure. This is one of his best segments ever. <laughs> you know, I, I think this is the least he's talked. The least this he's really talked. The least, the least we've we've ever known. You know, we're not yeah. starting off season two like we this planned. Season two kind of sucks. <laughs> we're in the sophomore slump. <laughs> season two you know, it's ended on a bang. Season, I mean, season one ended on a bang, and season two just sucks. You know, perhaps. We got crappy audio. <laughs> <laughs> no choice. What's going on? <laughs> Nothing's working. All right, here's what we'll do. All right. We'll do the two cent history lesson and give Rich time to perhaps right. return our call. Okay. Today, of course, is July 7th. It's chocolate day. Mm. Chocolate day. I like Every chocolate. day is chocolate day for me. Okay. I need something chocolate. But if you look at what is your go to, if it's you can only have one thing chocolate, what's it going to be? I don't know. I don't really. Uh, oh, you're not a chocoholic. I mean, I'm not. I, mean, I, I like chocolate. chocolate. So I don't. Uh, I don't you know. I, I guess you, you. If I if I said a Kit Kat right there. <laughs> well, yeah, but well, that's but that's more than chocolate. It's got well, the wafer. Well, sure. I mean, chocolate. Wafer. Anything with chocolate. Anything with chocolate. Anything okay, with I thought you meant like brand of chocolate is what you were uh, referring to, as opposed to that. Yeah, uh, Kit Kats. Yeah, that's my. Uh, the, the that Kit is Kat my kryptonite. Yeah. Butter. All right. And you. Um, probably be some type of Milky Way if I'm going, you know, candy. Hmm. But then there's cake. Now, Milky Way has the nougat, or Milky no. Way has the... Has the caramel. Ca oh. A little nougat, too, yeah. but uh, Three Musketeers is just nougat. And what is nougat? It's, it's some kind of... <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is a question that yeah. many would like to know. The, we you know what it is by just, seeing it, but right. it's like, what is it? What really? the hell is in nougat? It's, it's some kind of gummy, chocolatey, whipped... It's stuff. A, it, What's it, the, the uh, dictionary definition? Is it is a family of confections made with sugar or honey, roasted nuts, whipped egg whites, yeah. and, and sometimes that's what chopped candy fruit. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think that's no. what's in a Milky no, Way. No, no, no. Or a uh, uh, Three Musketeers. All right. So but I'm going. I'm going Milky Way. You're going Milky Way. But isn't time. that isn't that nougat though? I, I know there's some caramel in there that might mm -hmm. be a little nougat. Uh, father, father, daughter take a walk together day today. National Macaroni Day, Build a Scarecrow Day, and National Strawberry Sunday Day. Sunday Day. That's kind of fun to say. Uh, 1802, the first comic book was published in Hudson, New York. Hmm. It was The Wasp. You never hear of The Wasp. No. I did not know that. Because you always hear of like the first Batman or Spider-Man. Now, what year was this? 1802. Oh, that's pretty okay. Oh, hey. Look who called back. You know what? Maybe we should tell Rich we're in the yeah. middle of the history yeah. lesson right, right now. Bring him up here. Hey, Rich. Hey, Sean. How are you? Well, we're in the middle of the two-cent history yeah. lesson right you know, now. You're so officially a butt in We went to call you, and we <laughs> learned way less. I saw that. I was even watching. I'm not sure how this did it. I, I'll, I'll leave you guys to your business. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's okay. We can finish the history lesson yeah. after we chat with you. Well, but before we get to, we were discussing what is nougat. Yeah. Yeah, nougat. what's nougat? Yeah. You know, like in a Milky Way? Yeah, I know. And, and, you know, I'm going to have to go back over our contract. I'm pretty sure there was something in there that said no surprise questions. <laughs> it's, it's a very important question. We what is a nougat? We yeah. have a contract? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, assume it was a contract. Oh, okay, yeah. assuming. Uh, it's a verbal. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know what? I actually read something about that, and, and, and it slid right off my mind. I have no, no idea. But I did. I, I, 
do know there's a debate about about it. About nougat. Yeah. I mean, we all we all know we've all heard the word nougat. We all apparently enjoy nougat. I don't know anyone who goes, oh, nougat. I don't like nougat. And nougat is one of those words. The more you say it, the weirder it sounds. Yeah, nougat, yeah, nougat, nougat. I think you could, you could do something with that. Say that guy's a real nougat. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, sir? Don't, don't get your nougats in a bunch. <laughs> you know, you know, that could become the new, uh, you know, political attack. Oh yeah, he's a real nougat. Yeah. Oh, that nougat. Uh, you want? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he dropped a nougat on oh, that you, one. <laughs> <laughs> if you want real nougat, go with that guy. Yeah, yeah. he'll <laughs> nougat that thing all the way up. He's, uh, he's, he's <laughs> well, so really, the only thing I know that it's really in, or that I've you know most popular is is the Three Musketeers. Now I'm not sure if that's technically in a Milky Way. It's it, it is. It there's, says there's it, not as much nougat. It says it's a it's chocolate. Not, it's, 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 well, well that's that. the the airiness of the, <laughs> the nougat. <laughs> uh, yes. I, mean, I always thought that was the biggest disappointment. You get this big old Three Musketeers candy bar and then you bite into it and there was nothing there yeah, it's sometimes better off refrigerated or something yeah, uh, what is our what were we talking with rich about nougat oh, oh not no nougat. i'm sorry yes uh we, we had mentioned you know, you know less than when you first yeah. Yeah. and that's exactly. you've lived up to that promise no we were talking about the the district five yes. race for county commissioner proctor and Drake. Uh, but you know jay drick is the incumbent and uh, former hall mayor nick proctor uh, running uh, for the Republican nomination on the August 2nd primary ballot. And uh, these two have gotten into uh, quite a, a battle of words. Or or should I say, Nick a Proctor nugget. and Debbie Drick, Jay's <laughs> wife, have gotten into quite a war of words. But uh, anyway. Well, I don't know. I know you, you think that. I, and, and Debbie's pretty good at that. She's, uh, she's got a long political history. So uh, I'm not sure she's going to Then you oh, can go hey. pick, pick yeah. Nick. Yeah. Pick Nick. Pick Nick. Pick Nick or Drake. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not a picnic. There's a county commissioner race, and now you've got him having this battle. And, and now I see there's a second one out there. Uh, right. Uh, Carol Sureter and um, uh, Dave Dolmas. Right. Were, we reported on that. Uh, she filed a campaign finance uh, yeah, or a campaign yeah, violation. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I mean, there's, for, for the, I mean, how many people do you think vote in a uh, county commissioner primary? Well, as we've discussed before, in Livingston County, the GOP primary is generally the election. That's the election, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so what's your thoughts on the, on the Proctor and Drick uh, deal? Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, to, to paint Nick Proctor as a fiscal uh, liberal is, is a bit of a stretch. I mean... I don't want to make that well, but but the, 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 he, he strikes me as the type of guy who, who believes in uh, uh, government can do things, but it should be done uh, responsibly. You know, yeah, yeah, and and uh, but but it, it it shows me, I think, the the frustration of trying to run against what's become the the mainstream Republican Party. You just you just get a candidate gets up there and says, "No taxes, government's bad. No taxes." I mean, that advertisement they put out there said that that uh, uh, one of one of Nick's biggest drawbacks is that he's never run for county commissioner before. Right. <laughs> so, so you can never elect anybody who's never run for office before. No, they have to have been born into office. Which <laughs> 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 is Rick had never yeah. run for office until the first time he ran for office. Right. I mean, it, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. But uh, it's it's tough that the county commissioners. You know, I've been thinking about it in advance of this call, which I know goes against the grain, but um, how often do most people in the county come across in their daily lives anything to do with county government? They, they hardly don't. I mean, yeah. you don't you don't go to the drain commissioner's office. You don't go to the register of deeds or the county clerks. You hopefully aren't involved with the sheriff or the prosecutor's office. So, so it's... it's uh, you only hear about the county commissioners when they end up doing something that becomes controversial. And even that doesn't affect most people's lives. 
So it's 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 kind of a funny thing. I I I I I'm terrible at predicting races, but but uh, Jay's been pretty good at local races. He's lost his judicial races, but he uh, I'm not sure. I mean, how many? I don't even. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head who's the, who's the mayor of Howell right now. Well, now, now I do know when I think about it. So how many, So does Nick have any type of name recognition to go against a guy like Jay Drick, who has been able to gather votes and how? I don't, I don't know how many. Well, I, I think they. I mean, I think they have. They both have name recognition. I think Nick has name recognition. I think you know. Yeah. I think what you're talking about, though, or at least my sense of it is, is that anytime, look, this is about ideological purity, and yes. you know, yes. and it's not about issues. It's not about you know, how are we going to move the county forward or how, what are these particular policies that are best for the county's growth and development and blah, blah, blah. It is about, do you align to this ideological chart? Uh, and, and where are you? And so when Nick, the former mayor of Howell, starts to talk about any kind of nuance, uh, that makes him vulnerable to this ideological purity test. That uh, that I think Drick well, is throwing out. Some people want the same old, same old too. And, you know, if it's not broke, don't well, fix it. That can well, be. No, well, I, I do like what John is saying there because I looked at that exchange they had, and here on the one side, you've got the Drick campaign going, uh, "Don't vote for taxes, don't vote for taxes, don't vote for taxes," and uh, on the other side, you've got Nick writing this two or three page thing trying to explain the nuances of how city government runs. <laughs> What are voters going to listen to? I mean, unfortunately, you know, you, you hate raise taxes. I mean, right. <laughs> no. It's easy to just throw that out there. I, I guess it, I'd like to think that more people might say, well, now, wait a minute. Uh, and I'm dreaming now. Uh, but, but, but again, it's about ideological purity versus, I think, uh, you know, someone who's more well. It, it really boils down. I guess when you ask people directly, you take away the names and you just say, all right, look. Do you want somebody that's going to tell you what you want to hear, or do you want someone that's going to tell you how things are? And when you ask it that way, most people, oh, I want to hear how how things are. But then when you actually tell them how things are, which I think Nick is trying to do, that that three-page explanation that he issued, trying to explain things like Proposition A and, and, you know, uh, property taxes and things like that and how they affect revenue for municipalities like cities and townships and counties, uh, you know, it just, again, it makes them very vulnerable to that ideological attack. Uh, and so that's where you see this, I don't know, uh, it's sort of hypocrisy in, in what voters want. We say we want to be told the truth, but then when we're told the truth, really we plug our ears well, and run there's, away. There's part of it, too, where many people would say, what, what's a county commissioner? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great point. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's like, what, you know, what's the position? Yeah. Oh, you know, you're in charge of the, the water running off the streets or... Well, yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, the only thing we come into common into contact with mostly is the roads, and the roads is the road commission. It's not the county commission, right? And so, so uh, you know, it, it is that that issue because I think the county in general, and I don't have great insight on it, but from what I can tell, it runs pretty well. You get these you get these uh, controversies and make the headlines about uh, not appointing Steve Williams to the Metro Parks, or or taking away the abortion plank of the of the county insurance things, and those get a lot of coverage. But that has very little to do with the day to day running of the county. And the county's a bizarre operation. I mean, you've got this huge budget, and you've got department heads, some of which answer directly to the county commissioners, and but the the big names answer directly to the voters they get elected so so this is a bizarre uh, network of uh, of an organization chart and yet it seems for all to, to run pretty well I, I don't know of any great controversies in the, in the functioning of the government because most of it's pretty meat and potatoes stuff well right? that that may have been true but i think the pandemic did uh, uh, expose some of when you have this ideologically driven body of government because they control the health department. So in that particular instance, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're seeing this ideologically driven uh, effort to run county departments instead of instead of deferring to expertise. It's do you now. So it's now it's not just fellow politicians have to line up on the ideological chart. It's 
uh, it, it's 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 uh, you know, uh, you're, you're it, it's administrators, experts, and paid professionals. You also sure. now must line up on this ideological chart. So I, I think there's that's where I think we're beginning to see. I think Mike is dead right that most there's many many people out there who have no idea what the county board of commissioners does is or maybe even exists. Uh, yeah, they, but, they, they may yeah. walk into the booth going, oh, I like that guy's sign. Okay, and they pick, they check the box. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, let's let's face reality here. Uh, your, or they just recognize voice. that. I mean, listen, I mean. as we know, mission or the sign looks good. I mean, right. So it's uh, or who did that before? Okay, yeah. I guess things are yeah. okay, and they they check the box. They just right. don't know. I mean, it's like if you're if you're running they don't, for. They don't even know, and that's kind of probably why why I mean it is a name recognition. That's that's kind of why I think Carol Sorita is uh, making us think about. Uh, Domus putting his uh, re-elect Domus signs because there's a, there's going to be a bunch of people saying, oh, yeah, I remember Domus he used to be, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll re-elect the incumbent. He's, right. he's not really the incumbent because he stepped down for, for a couple terms. But uh, it's, it's, you know, but John brings up a good point. The, I think for a while the, the county department heads and administrators just kept their heads down, did their jobs, and, 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 and let the county commissioners have their little little spitball fights but but now there's this this very real risk that it's going to uh, influence uh, public policy that that could have dramatic effects on, uh, on the health and welfare of the community and i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm uh real comfortable with the, the likes of jay drick and uh, uh megan reckling and who are, are obviously cultural warriors um you know, it'd be kind of interesting. I think I mentioned this once before. If Megan Reckling and uh, Nick Proctor both got on the uh, county board, considering their their history on the drag queen bingo thing, but well, you know, with drink, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, this is my personal opinion, and I just from the people I know in this community, and I know people that are very conservative. Uh, generally, they don't like Jay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean. I hear many, many people who will say off the record, uh, not into a microphone, but they'll say, I don't like Jay. I really don't like him as a person. He's kind of a jerk. Um, and so even though he may match up on these ideological grounds, uh, I don't know. I mean, I wonder, it sounds to me like you're saying as the incumbent, based on He's the current not. political environment that we've got, you're thinking Jay kind of has this. That Nick is. Well, I, think, I think. I mean, he's lost when he's gone countywide. He's, he's been beaten pretty heavily by, by both times. I think by Teresa Brennan. But but uh, locally, he's won those races, and and those pick trick signs. I think they're silly, but they they remind people. Oh, yeah, I voted for Jay before. And, I mean, he, right. he, when he when they had that open position when Donnie Parker uh, stepped down, uh, he won pretty handily, didn't he? I mean. Uh, Jay, yeah, I don't remember the exact uh, thing, but yeah, he did. He did get in there. I mean, as you pointed out, he lost judicial races that he ran for, but then he was appointed to the magistrate's position, but then resigned it. But then resigned it away, and he said for health Jay, reasons. Jay's unusual. I mean, if you recall back when he first ran for uh, for district court or for circuit court judge against Teresa, his push was you shouldn't let. Um, a Democrat appoint a uh, uh, a judge for Livingston County because uh, Brennan had been uh, appointed by Jennifer Granholm. And his whole point was, uh, that we shouldn't have a Democrat. You shouldn't let a Democratic uh, a candidate who's been appointed by a Democrat. Well, then our reporter Dan Meisler did some digging and found out that Jay had contributed to Jennifer Granholm's campaign. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, he's he's. He's a political animal, <laughs> no matter what. And it didn't matter. I mean, I think I think he got beat pretty pretty handily. But not, but a, a local race, a primary race, I don't know. Depends. It depends if, if I mean I know uh, the Drip team, uh, J and W will be out there with signs and phone calls and they're, they're actually on advertisements. Uh, will Nick get out there and, and knock on doors? No, well, I, I don't know. I mean, it's. I, uh, look, District 5 includes the city of Howell, uh, which is opposed to the surrounding town. I mean, look, Livingston County in general, very conservative, no no, no doubting that. Uh, but the city of Howell, if anything, is less 
conservative than say some of the surrounding townships. That, that's true. So that's I think true. I think if there's a chance, it's in District Five, and I I just hope, you know, I wonder if if people might say, look, if we're going to have a commission that's going to ha- be led by West Nakagiri and is probably going to have Megan Reckling on it, uh, and 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 you know, and 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 Brenda Plank and others, uh, and maybe Dave Domus, very hard right ideological people maybe it would be beneficial to have somebody to counterbalance that i mean uh you know i know this is a republican primary i know i wants it to be balanced but it's probably not going to be balanced who's going to be voting it it's going to be the people who vote for republican right no that's they're very avid voters yeah you gotta give them credit for that no you know there's no about i mean carol griffith is not going to seek another term on the board and she's sort of yeah she's been that centrist she's been that person that you know and and her and kate lawrence before were sort of held that central block uh right a little bit of common sense and but now with Carol leaving, uh, you know it, it, the board is gonna is primed to take a hard right turn, with, which was already pretty hard right to begin with. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess this segment has lived up to its name because I think we know less about what's gonna happen. Well, I just I just gotta say it's such it's taking such a turn. When I first came to this county, God help me, that was almost half a century ago. Uh, the county board of commissioners didn't didn't play those types of games they they're basically trying to run the county as frugally as possible you had guys like jack labelle and fred dillingham was on the board uh there were there were nine commissioners and two of them and i swear to god this is true were democrats john rushford and ned davis and it wasn't that big a deal they just they dealt with issues they got the ambulance department started and it's 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 kind of too bad it's become so ideological but I do think Nick's running and candidates like Nick run into an uphill battle because they've got to defend government. And the other side just says, government's bad. Taxes, cut them. Right. So, and, and that, and, in a primary, that plays. Wait a minute. Government's bad, but I want to be in government. Well, you know, <laughs> so that's a different story. <laughs> but but, but, uh, but they, they're, they're in there to control us, to stop yeah. government. You know, it started with Ronald Reagan when he said, uh, uh, Government's not the solution, it's the problem. And and in fact, that's not true. In many cases, government's got to be the solution. I mean, we believe in police departments and uh, in roads and, and going to a restaurant or a grocery store and not having foul meat being sold to us. And that's all because of well-functioning governments, you know? Well, so, right. But, uh, but that... And, and yet... It, there's nothing wrong with trying to make your government run well, but it shouldn't be considered the enemy. Right. And and the two examples you just bring up, law enforcement, sheriff's department, the budget is run through the county commission. Health yep. department, again, commission. through the county commission. So the county commission, despite what many people may or may not know, does have an impact on your day-to-day you know, life here in Livingston County. So whether... Yeah, to, some, to some extent. It depends how much run. It depends how... how much finesse the administrators can do. I mean, we've had county administrators, uh, as Belinda Peters, I think, who's just outstanding, and they, they stay out of the political limelight, and they kind of run things and uh, uh, let the county commissioners get all, all the, the publicity, which is not a bad way of working things. I mean, you know, it was a time when you didn't have the county board of commissioners. It was the board of supervisors, and the, the supervisor of each township was did double duty and was right. on, on the board, but that got changed because uh, it was unequal representation. So now you've got this extra layer of government, and you've got all these fiscal responsible Republicans who are the highest paid elected uh, governing board in the county. <laughs> so they, oh, that's they, why they're they, going they, for the gig. They, they, they have the money. I think the potential is there for, for a lot of mischief to happen. What you hope for is that they, they, they strut and do some posturing and, and let the professionals do their job. But uh, uh, John brings up a really good point. Uh, they're meddling into the health department issue there. And, and uh, I, I'm not sure how much, how many health degrees the, uh, 
the county commissioners have, but I, I would probably prefer the uh, the experts. To be, to be Big zeros on those. <laughs> Uh, right. right. Well, you know, is it to, so to wrap this up, I guess, uh, and back to the race itself, it, it you know, it, it's obviously it's Nick Proctor's race to win. He's going to have to go out and win it. It's an uphill battle. I think that that is probably true. Uh, you know, just uh, Jay being the incumbent, that gives him a certain advantage, but for all these other reasons. Uh, so oh, we'll like, see. The other thing that Nick's got to be thinking about, what if he wins? <laughs> <laughs> Holy hell, what have I done? <laughs> I don't know. I know. A friend told me that when I ran for the state house. She was living in Florida. She sent me an email. She says, You realize if you win, you're going to have to serve. Yeah, <laughs> right. you know. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Just send the checks here. I... All right. Well, indeed, we know less, and we thank you, Rich Pearlberg. All right, Rich. So thanks for doing it. Yeah. All right, you too. Have some nougat. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> All right. The less you know, brought to you by Jordan Genso Remax Platinum. If you uh, Nike, if you want to know more, give Jordan a call two four eight four 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 nine seven seven seven, or find him on Facebook, Jordan Genso Community Survey Community Realtor. All right. Where were we on the history? I don't know. We get back. It was uh, we, the first comic book. Okay. Eighteen oh two. Eighteen oh two. It was the Wasp. The Wasp. Yeah. What was the Wasp about? Do we know? Uh, a bug. <laughs> About three pages long. Was it like a superhero thing? Or, you know, <laughs> it just seems a little early for the wasp. You know, I just. Uh... Uh, 1930, construction began on what is now the Hoover Dam, originally the Boulder Dam. Either way, you're swearing while you say the name of it. The first package of sweet and low sugar substitute was served at a restaurant in 1957. I'll <laughs> explain that better, but. Yeah, always had that aftertaste. My wife will do uh, you pretty much you got the acrobatics the to get the Splenda. That's the yellow, yeah, right? The yellow. Yeah, yeah. Like if they bring, she's like, nope, bro, blue, blue, nope, no, nope. Hey, nope. Yeah, because uh, what's the other one? The uh, the blue one is what equal. Uh, equal. Blue, blue is equal. equal. The split. Yeah, the sweet Splenda. low is not yeah, sweet. No, it's, no, it's like chemical. Equal. <laughs> and now she is uh, like Splenda. Yeah. It sounds nice. And now she has, you know, a little. I give it in her purse and you're like, okay, okay boy, boy, boy. smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she Splendor. had a little white box at the restaurant. There's, you know, she doesn't steal. Box. No, no, no. My wife's very she used to. She doesn't steal any. Two for but my she makes cup it, of She's coffee. very particular. Yeah. Yeah. Must have Splenda. Yeah, I, I prefer Splenda too. So we're in the Splenda. I mean, she will. She'll send waitresses. Hey, all, uh, hey I think I see Splenda over there. Go, tick, 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 go get it. Does a ninja move yeah. over to table six. <laughs> 1980. The Solar Challenger became the first solar-powered aircraft to cross the English Channel. Solar Challenger. Mm. Bruce Springsteen in 1984 went to number one in the U.S. on the album charts with Born in the USA. Spent a total of 139 weeks on the U.S. charts. Had quite a few hits off that album. Uh, yeah. I, I still find it interesting how many people think the Born in the USA is a patriotic, you know, red, white, and blue, rah, rah, rah song. I think it's, it is patriotic, but not in the way people think it is. It's like, did you read the lyrics? Hmm. Anyway. Well, it, it is misleading, too, when you look at the cover of the album. Yeah. You got the flag, and you've got Bruce in his blue jeans and white t-shirt. Well, it kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. It's like, uh, you want someone to say that what you want to hear, or do you want them to tell you how it is? Uh, Bruce, Bruce, I think, is somebody that kind of tells you how it is. <laughs> and 2010 on this day, Paul McCartney joined Ringo Starr on stage. By the way, today's Ringo's birthday. At a concert in New York City at uh, the Radio City Music Hall to celebrate the former Beatles' 70th birthday. So Ringo's 82 today. Uh, with Ringo's all-star band, John, uh, Yoko Ono, Joe Walsh, Angus Young, Stevie Van Zandt. All belted out birthday for Ringo. And then he sang with a little help from my friends. Well, there you that, go. that was, I can't believe that was 12 years ago. 82. Yeah, Ringo's 82 and he's still. And Paul just celebrated 80. Yeah. And uh, on history lesson for today. They look better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't gone on tour yet. When you go on tour, you'll start to look better. Hmm. So no, there's that. There is that. All right. Uh, also, I was reading, there was a, I thought this was interesting. Let me pull this up here. Um, when it comes to buying cars, when it comes to buying cars, 
more men, it's the color of the vehicle is more important to men than it is to women. I don't think that that's too out there. Right. Because there are some cars I'm like, you paid for that color? <laughs> and there's others where you're like, oh, yeah, that looks really great. 60% of men say color is the deciding factor on whether or not they're going to buy a vehicle. So if you're going into the dealer and let's just say there's like Battleship Gray in the vehicle you want and Battleship Gray is the color you never would buy, guys would decide to buy a different vehicle. 30% of women say color is the deciding factor when it comes to purchasing, purchasing a vehicle. There, I, I think it's because It depends on the color. That's what I'm saying. I know. The color. That's what I'm saying. It, I, but I mean, it, but even with it, like certain colors, you're like, I don't care. If it's black, brown, or white, eh. If it's, you know, like some really neon green. Well, yeah. The, yeah. the neon green brings a great point because there's a lot of uh, sports or muscle type cars, like right. the Charger, Challenger, those kind of things. Even, even Mustangs and Camaros that are in that really bright highlighter type green. Hold on, like this. And it's like, for me... Even though it might be the car I want, I'm right. not buying this color. Right. But for my kids, but they're I, like, oh, that's so cool. Exactly. We're, we're old. So. <laughs> I'll take the brown Oldsmobile, <laughs> sir. Thank you. <laughs> if it says, if it has Olds in the title, <laughs> that means you're old. Well, that's why they got rid of Oldsmobile. It's, yeah, it's kind of insane. Yeah, apparently, old, only yeah. old people are buying these cars. You like took over for yeah. that now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Buick? Must be an old guy car. I no oh, and it's in tan. <laughs> <laughs> or kind of an off gold. Right. Yeah. All right. Sorry if I offended all you. No. How old stars with dare you, sir? Yeah, all right. All right. So uh, we're wrapping up episode one of season two. Well, it wasn't as exciting as we no, planned. Was it was it? okay. I, I mean, we're, look, we're getting ready. We are cons <laughs> we're conserving ourselves. Oh, we're saving for it up. Saturday. That's right. All right. That's Don't expect much tomorrow. Then. Summer splash party. That's what's going on. Yeah. John will be in a thong. The first 100 people through the door get a uh, Mike and John Summer Splash t-shirt. And a look at me in a thong? No one will come. No. <laughs> Boxers, so, maybe? No. All right. So we're going to give away the t-shirts. Yeah. TPC the, cards. And a chance to win some jewelry from Cooper right. and Binkley Jewelers. Other swag. And you can see the movie Plus, Splash yeah, free. Yeah, right. And some giggle giveaway. Oh, and, and, and... A three-and? Yeah. That's a three-ander. Tyler uh, DePero, the owner of the Hall Theater, has graciously uh, said he's going to donate 20% of all concession sales are going to go to Torch 180. So you buy the popcorn, 20% right. of what you pay. they got great that. popcorn there. You use yeah. that coconut oil. People love that popcorn. So you're, And you can't see a movie without popcorn. I mean, what's the... You, you, That's you, part of the It's not allowed. It's not allowed. Yeah. So you're going to want to get some popcorn. Yeah. And you can know that 20% of those proceeds... Tyler snow caps. Yeah, oh, for sure. I don't really like snow caps, but I thought I'd ask. You know, I don't, they're okay. It's like having a chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> no chuckles. I never understood chuckles. I'm like, Especially the big black chuckle. Here's what chuckle All right, is. All right. Here, here. one red one and I'm done. Because the green and, and the clear one. And, and chuckles are one. if you, okay, you know how you have a jelly jar? And when you, the, the, the jelly that congeals around the lid. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if you scraped there. all that off and molded it into, that's a chuckle. Yeah, so I just I no I'm not eating a chuckle. Uh, they named it chuckle because I'll have a goober. I'll have a goober. I'll have a raisinette. You are a goober. I, well, that too. <laughs> I'll have a snow cap. No chuckles. No, no. Sorry. Need a licorice whip. <laughs> I'm licorice. I don't understand licorice. Twizzler. Mm. Red rope. Those long ones. Mm. I like those. <laughs> okay. Well, this has been quite a fascinating conversation. Should have saved it for the post show. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. No, we've got post show. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. We got post show? Yeah. We'll get to the post show for you YouTubers. Is Cougar here? Not here, but Not she here. will be there Saturday be, at right. the Summer Splash Party. Yeah, she's going to perform some tunes. Yeah. Sing alongs. I think she'll do a sing along to, uh, you know, our, theme, song. our theme song. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Do you know the words? It's coming to me. <laughs> John got it going on. Michael John got it going on. Oh, see, Harry blew it. You've been giggling with Michael John. Tune in next time and giggle. Giggle on. <laughs> giggle on. Yeah. All right. Post show. Okay. We're post-show now. 
you must deliver. Well, you said there was post show. One of our uh, one of our fans, who is a regular, one out of two. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> Why would you say that? Was it about your CD collection? Yeah, yeah. I, I did say they, that. They, you know, they turn uh, the post show right. for the they, CD they, collection. They, right. Every now and then I wander back and pick out a CD and John tells the story. Right. Of where that... Which why just shows you that some people have pretty low standards yeah. for what they consider to be entertainment. So I figure we would uh, we would indulge. Well, do you want to go back and pick out the no, CD? You're gonna the whole, no, you're going to... No, the whole shtick... Is me picking out Is you CD. picking it out. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give me a row. And I'll pick a CD from there. All right, row, row three. Row three. All right. Seat 16. Right. All right, row three. Right. Those it, was our, it, was our, it was our friend Jeff DeHanens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Jeff said, I always, wa I always watch the exclusive content. Ready for more from John CD Collection in the back. All right. All right. I'm just randomly swiping. Row three. CD. Here we I go. This is, row three. This is the kind of entertainment. Which, uh, you don't get this anywhere else, no. fellas. So row three is like the, uh, the last third of the alphabet. Right, yeah, I have my alphabetizer. You don't have to put those on. Yeah. Close show now. And it's uh, Sing It Again, Rod. I used to have this on cassette. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing It Again, Rod, which I think most of these were released on other albums. Yeah, it's like, it's like your greatest hits. Yeah. So Sing It Again, Rod, tell us the story. Did you buy it because Pinball Wizard was on it? I bought this CD. There is a story to this CD. I bought this CD... A station that we used to work for many, 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 many years ago. Yeah. Uh, down in Monroe. I, even before you started, because I worked there originally, and then you, you came later, but... Uh, t -t -t Tower 98. Yes. Tower 98 in Monroe. T -t -t Tower. Um, and uh, I was doing the news there, but then they needed a weekend jock, and I became... Uh, He's multi-talented. Yeah. And, and, and so I became... J.J. Quinn. No, no, I was J.J. Quinn... Already. Okay, you're already, yeah, so you're already J.J. Quinn. No, well, I was John King doing the news. Then I became J.J. Quinn. Yeah, he's to, to just, multiple layers of personality. Yeah, trust me. Let's get to the oh. CD. Why yeah, well, no, I'm dead. So then they said, oh, you know what? We want to do kind of a, a cool type, because uh, it was a top 40 station. So they played, you know, that kind of stuff. And they said, you know, we want to do some, we want to do like a cool specialty show on the weekends where we're doing like oldies type music, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And they said, so, okay, but you can't be John J.J. Quinn. So I made up Johnny Be Good. <laughs> There's three so of them. Now. I was at one time. I was John King, JJ Quinn, and Johnny Be Good. And, That's original. And then was I Good? saw this CD, and it was on like a discount bin. Yeah. And I was like, Oh man, I got to get this. This is Kmart, you know, probably <laughs> with a Best Buy sticker <laughs> absolutely, on it. <laughs> absolutely. And uh, I'm like, Oh, this has you know, it's got uh, you wear it well, reason to believe. Uh, and then you know, like like I said, it's got Maggie Mae, of course. Um, but then Pinball Wizard and, and some of these other So I was like, I gotta have the C D and I bought it so I could play, play it. it. That's that's the story. <sighs> the story sounded a lot better when I started. Yeah. It didn't really end well. Kind of like well, this podcast. Now we all know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> Rod looks really young on this well, one too. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff is gonna chime in and go, on second uh, thought, yeah. you know, I See, you know the interesting <laughs> part is when you look at how Rod Stewart used to dress in the sixties and seventies. Right. Mostly the seventies. You know, it was I, pretty Well that's why when I hear the when I hear people are like these, uh, these kids these days and they're gender bending, I'm like, Hello, David Bowie. <laughs> mm, David Bowie's calling. Yeah, Steven Tyler dresses yeah. kind of funny <laughs> <I'm> like, too, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I like Aerosmith. Not that new. Not that new. All right. All right. All right. That's our our wrap. Thank God. Of the day. All right. All right. You want me to hit the button? Yeah, I'm too exhausted. <laughs>